Ah, uh, all right. Well, since the beginning of the election, I thought I'd better do an election video. And I had all these dreams of doing something exciting. I wasn't going to include any rap dancing, don't worry, or anything like that. And um, and I, I keep putting it off. I think, well, am I in the right frame of mind today or whatever? So look, I'll start just ranting about who I am. My name's Mark Aldridge. I'm running for the election in, in Ramsey. Um, I don't have any notes, so I'll just talk about the things that are important to me. And one of the things that um, struck me 20 years ago when I first ran in politics was the system itself, the, the democratic system is pretty broken and there's been lots of, uh, um, over the last probably 20 years that I've looked into it, there's been lots of dodgy practices which aren't good. The system itself set up for the two major parties, um, it's called Two Party Preferred um, and it's preferred by them because generally your vote ends up with them. So um, rather than talk about all the problems that we've had with the electoral system itself, I think maybe we just talk about what I'd like to see changed and, and what I'd like to, you guys to endure. Um, first of all, it's pretty easy. We need to abolish everything, really. Um, we need to get rid of how to vote cards. We need to get rid of backroom deals. We need to get rid of those posters off the side of the road. We don't need them. What we need is a, a very basic system where you have the right to vote if you feel there's somebody worth voting for. So if you don't, you shouldn't have to vote. Um, if you do wish to vote, you should be able to freely choose who you vote for. The Constitution of Australia uh, talks about a free and informed vote. Um, free and informed means freedom to, to choose who you want to um, support and informed means that you know who they are. And of course you drive around your area, there's all these posters with faces that generally you don't know. Um, the media don't talk about who those people are and uh, they talk about the political parties. So, Generally, you think uh, you have two and a half choices. Uh, this year, they're saying there's three choices. And uh, the problem you'll have, um, if you vote Labor, um, the member that you elect in your area, which sometimes you won't know who they are, um, has to go to their political party and beg and borrow and steal to try and get something for you. Um, if you're a safe seat, so for instance sake, I'm running in Ramsey, which is considered a safe Labor seat. Um, obviously, the uh, person that represents Labor is not going to have much luck trying to get extra things for you. So um, if you vote for someone like me as an independent, my job is to represent you individually. And um, that will mean that if Labor were elected, for instance, say, uh, whatever they promised, I'll try and hold them to account for that. And um, I would lobby for extra things for you without having to beg and borrow the party first. So in other words, I would uh, go into politics debate. Um, let's say uh, Labor want to pass a particular motion. Um, what would happen then? is they'd come to me and say, we need your vote in Parliament. And I'll go, look, I'm, I could consider that if you could consider doing this or that or, or the other for me in, in the electorate. So um, democracy should be about um, a very basic, uh, simple system where um, <clears throat> a booklet comes to your home. It's not expensive to do. You open up the booklet. It explains how to vote to make sure your vote counts, which most of us know. And then it should have a list of the candidates. Um, a base overview of what those candidates stand for in your area and uh, the right of you to be able to say, okay, I don't like any of them, I'm not going to vote, or I like three, not six, and you should be able to preference only those you actually prefer. Then let's say um, you choose three only and the person you choose first is me, for instance, say, and I get into Parliament and I have made promises to you and I don't keep those promises. Um, you should be able to hold me to account, have me sacked, and the person that came second should step straight in um, because there should be accountability for, pro accountability for promises. Um, that's awkward, which means for someone like me, I can't promise you $150 million for a particular thing because I'm not a political party. Um, I can promise certain things, which I'll tell you about in a moment, and um, those things that I promise you will be on top of whatever the government of the day decides to do for the state. So I'll try and improve what is given to my electorate over and above what the political parties will offer you. Um, so that's how my system of democracy would work. Um, you go in, you've got ID, you get given a pen, um, you know who's running and who's not, um, you preference only those that you prefer, um, and then you walk away and that particular person's elected. And I think there should be a mandate in parliament that anyone elected to represent you even if they're from a political party, should be able to have a conscience vote on every topic. So they're not dragged into line um, with political pol a policy. <clears throat> I don't think um, I don't think democracy was about um, a representative that you elect uh, is actually representing a political party. They should represent your best interests. 
Um, I'd like to go and talk about a couple of things and, and I'll try and be brief, but it won't be easy. Healthcare um, is in disarray and I won't go into hours and hours upon it. Um, if you haven't been in the hospital before, um, you won't probably know how bad the waiting lists are and the waiting times for elective surgeries. Um, at the moment, we, are, we have slipped from <coughs> top of the ladder in, uh, in the world to right down the bottom. So from 17 beds per thousand down to under two. And just to give you an idea, Labor, Liberal and, and the um, Xenophon team all looking to put an extra 20,000 people a year into South Australia. Now, let's just talk beds here, beds per popular. If we, uh, let's say, at the bottom of the rung in the world at two beds per thousand, and we're gonna bring 20,000 people in, we need another 40 beds this year and every year. And we haven't had any for a long time. So we're gonna slip further and further behind as we increase population, unless there's investment in hospitals. And that's not actually buying a bed, it's the staff and the, the, um, the staff that you need there, the nurses, the doctors, the people in the background, um, that, that is where we're failing and we're not, we're not just failing to get enough of them, uh, we're not paying them well enough to be totally honest and uh, we're losing them and they're moving interstate and overseas and we're attracting four, five, seven visa workers to fill the gaps and I'm not going to drag down anyone, everyone I've met in the hospital is a hard working and, and, and genuinely compassionate good people but there's not enough of them and uh, I'll lobby to, to improve that and my main topic of, uh, will be Lionel McEwen because that's the hospital I'll go to and that's where you guys will end up um, if one of your children are injured or one of your family members are injured. And I'd like to know that they can get through a system that's, that's, that's not antiquated and going backwards. Um, that's healthcare. Um, you've got power production. Um, I've been in the arena 20 years. Um, I know for a fact that our major power generation plants, that's their base load power generation plants, which are still coal or gas fired, um, are on the brink of disaster and the government knows it. And rather than repair those and make sure that they're there, so you switch, flick the switch, you've got power and affordable power, um, they're chucking everything into renewable. Now, I'm a big supporter of renewable energy, but uh, unless you can store it, uh, unless there's power when the wind isn't blowing and the sun's not shining, um, as an industrial nation, we can't cope. You know, your fridge, of, your food in your fridge needs to stay cold. So we need to make sure that we step back a little bit invest in making sure that we have base load power that's affordable and then continue back on the path to renewable and decent storage solutions. And I'm, I'm not talking about batteries that last an hour and a half, I'm talking about batteries that last two days um, so that we know we can flick completely over to renewable when we can and if there's an issue, we've got those backup generation plants and that'll address the, the power problem. In Ramsey, my idea is this, if I can't bring the government into line and do something for the Ramsey electorate, then we can get together as, as one area, Salisbury. We can then try and find a way of procuring power um, for a contract deal for um, you guys to see if we can get those power costs down. Um, in the interim period on top of power and health, um, we have everyday cost of living and that's something that I've tried to achieve as many people know. Um, I've opened markets that's to help the farmers, but of course I can provide food, fresh food for you in your area now, um, where you can go and buy food at around 40 to 50% off um, what the grocery stores are charging. And we're also making sure the farmers are paid better for their produce. And they also help small business, but I am a bit hand-strung because I won't sell um, imported product there, only Australian only, and that's made expanding my market chains very awkward because the government for some weird and odd reason, um, don't agree with me sticking to uh, Australian produce only. So, um, but I'm not willing to falter on that. And uh, as you know, um, my markets, uh, the bigger they get, the more pressure to shut me down. So I've been in and out of the courts for the last two or three years now to try and keep them open. Um, what I would like to do if elected, um, I'll obviously have a fairly reasonable income. As you know, MPs get paid pretty damn well and I'll also have staff. So I'd like to donate some of that money and time and staff work to not just expanding my markets and, and protecting local community events, but I think we could feed the North. I think we could set up something where we, we put all the excess produce, share that amongst those that are um, most in need uh, and doing it hard, um, those who have lost jobs from Holdens and things like that. I'd also like to feed them nicely too. I'd like to set up a restaurant that we can open a few days a week and, and, and share the love get good chefs in locally and, and, and feed you. So th there's some of the things that I think I can do differently. Um, the other issues, of course, 
uh, things like child protection and protection of our elderly. Um, look, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've run rallies for the last 10 or 15 years. We've still got critical waiting lists for the disabled, which means that they're suffering because we can't find a couple of million. And you've seen how much has been thrown around at this election. There's plenty of money. Um, you know, it's got to be spent correctly and you can't have some poor child laying in a bed somewhere that needs some a piece of equipment to have, a, you know, some value of life or, and, and um, lifestyle. And we, we can't deny them that. That needs to be fixed. Our elderly and our children that get abused in um, government institutions is, is sickening. And, uh, you know, if I was... I heard about Oakton myself eight years ago. I know there was a lot of talk um, and stuff came into me. I passed it on to Parliament. Nothing's been done. If I was a member of Parliament, someone rang me and said a child's being abused or something's happening here or our elderly are getting um, not looked after properly or something's going wrong in an institution of any form, I'll get in my car and damn, we'll drive down there and find out what the hell's going on and report back to you. And if the media aren't interested in listening to me, I'll come online like this and tell you what's going on. Um, this is a community issue. This is not just Parliament. We, we as a community must work together. If I get elected, I can't do as much without your support. And I'll be asking for a hell of a lot of it because we can be the best state we can be the best country again. We, we've got the wealth to do that. We're just not spending it correctly. And in Ramsey, I'll be putting a lot of work into that. One of the other things when we talk about safety is we talk about policing. And we've got a part-time police station. At 5.30, the police station shuts. How ridiculous. Since when um, is policing a part-time thing? Why, why should we have to wait for a police officer to come from another area if you've got some sort of problem or, or something um, 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 terrible has happened in your street or in your home and uh, we need police on the beat 24-7. I can achieve that. I will put enough pressure on them to get that uh, Salisbury Police Station open 24-7. Uh, I, I think we need more police on the street too. I know they like to raise revenue for the government um, but I think it's past time that they went back to the old fashioned terms of serve and protect. I'm elected, if I'm elected, I'm elected to serve you and protect your best interests and police are paid to do exactly the bloody same thing. And um, I'm sick of, you know, ring up and your house has been broken into and they'll give you a number over the phone. No, they should come and investigate, take fingerprints and find the bastards so that we can stop them doing it. But if we don't deter crime, it just keeps going and going. And, and we've got online crime now, we've got bullying, we've got our children being attacked online, we've got pre predators online. And the police just aren't capable of doing anything about it. And we can't either. I mean, we can't go around and become vigilantes. We need to be able to go to the police and say, look, there's a, a problem. My child's being um, uh, trolled online or he's being bullied or she's been bullied online and at school. And there needs to be something to done to stop it. And once we start stopping these things and making them public, they just hope that maybe that'll change. Um, the damage it's doing to society because I think it's, it's unacceptable that you go to the police station and they say, sorry, this is a Commonwealth issue or a federal issue and pass the buck. If there's, a, if, if there's not decent laws in this state to do that, then we need to create them. And if there's not enough staff in the police stations to police these things properly, then we have to get off our arse and, and, and demand it. And so protection of our children and our elderly is not just important to me, it should be important to the government, it should be important to us as a community working together. Uh, and we can achieve anything. And if you can remember back a few years, there's been a couple of um, terrible disasters in South Australia. And um, both times in those disasters, I got off my ass and managed to do a lot of a good work in the community. Now that wasn't me, um, that was just giving the community itself a platform to do good. And I'm, so I know you all wanna help when these things happen. And it's past time we should be able to, we're all adults, and while we're speaking about being adults, um, we can speak about medical marijuana, which is, uh, I've been speaking on the applications of cannabis and hemp in Australia for 20 years. Now I'm talking the industrial. My, my background's industrial applications. Um, that means fuel, food, fibre. It, it means building materials. It means a lot of things. And uh, our farmers want to do it. Um, they're not set up to. Um, we're falling so far behind, the rest of the world laughs at us. There's, there's uh, Henry Ford was building vehicles in the, in the 1910, 1920s that ran on hemp ethanol, and he made panels in the 1930s made out of hemp resin, which you could hit with a sledgehammer and couldn't dent. And here we are, we, we're doing nothing. BMW is now starting to build cars using hemp uh, fibres for the panels. Um, why can't we be leading? And um, 
if you're talking about medical applications, let's say I'm sick and I'm on painkillers and those painkillers are doing a lot of damage to my body and I opt as an adult, right, to produce something myself from a non-toxic plant and consume that without causing any danger to anybody else, right, then why is that a crime? Why is it that we have people being arrested that are experts in their field that are helping people from dying, from dying? Um, people in pain and suffering, and we, the government turns around and says, oh, 97% of the people now want medical um, applications, so they legalise it, but then don't tell anyone it's okay. The doctors can't prescribe for you yet, why not? Um, why isn't there an investigation? Why have we set up something to become the leaders in this? Why can't we be exporting, not the plant, uh, like we do our minerals? Why can't we export the final product? Why can't we make products that are, help save people that are non-toxic um, that can help avert cancer and things like that. Where's the investigation? Where's the investment? There's none. Um, I can't do that as your um, uh, c c member, representative in Parliament. I, I can't do that myself. I, I can push for it. I can lobby for it. But I can at least tell you that I'll be on the side of common sense when it comes to issues like this that everyone else wants to sweep under the carpet. Um, we've covered bullying. Uh, we've covered policing. I mean, <coughs> I think the main problem that people don't see, um, and and that is the uh, background issues that I'm are very important to me, and of course, constitution is, is important. Uh, affordable justice, we don't have that. I don't know if anyone's been through the courts now, but the cost to go to court to fight, say, a $1,000 fine that you don't think you owe is so dear that you may as well pay the fine, and that's unacceptable in this country. Uh, we need better, we deserve better. Um, we need easier access to support services. We can't have a friend come with us. I mean, the system's set up to empower lawyers and judges. It's not set up to empower justice, and it, it, that's something that's very important to me. I think we need a Bill of Rights. Can I provide that as the Ramsey? No. As the Ramsey representative? No, I can't, but can I fight for it? Uh, can I push for that at the state level? Yes, I can, and I'll continue to, and I have done for 10 years. Um, we, we have an ongoing problem with work and employment in Australia. And here's the big kicker. The Labor government, Liberal government, whichever gets in, are going to promise you $2 billion worth of infrastructure, nice big freeways, nice new roads. But who's doing the job? Who's getting the work? Are they saying, we're going to spend $10, $110 million on a new roadway and we're going to guarantee that that work goes to local contractors? No. We've got people coming, Fulton Hogan, we've got them coming over from New Zealand to tell us how to build roads. They're bringing employees from Victoria, from overseas on 457 visa, work, visa workers to do the work that we should be doing. And if the government wants to turn around and say, oh, look, I'm really sorry, we don't have the skills, then train the skills to our children. If there's a job at the local council for gardening or services or anything like that, the job should go to local workers. This is how you create jobs, okay? Common sense approach. There's a certain amount of jobs created in this state and those jobs need to stay here and reward the people that are here. Um, if, for instance, sake, to build a freeway, it's gonna cost an extra few million dollars to, to hire local people, great, spend the money. Those people get money, they reinvest it um, with small businesses, they reinvest it in places like my markets, and next minute you know the economy's picked up and we're all feeling a little bit brighter and happier about the possibility of owning an own home or, or uh, buying a new car or um, you know, spending time traveling this beautiful state of ours. Or maybe we can afford to buy a decent bottle of wine or go to the pub for a meal like we used to. Um, so there's a lot of things that need to be done, but I can't do them all. Um, what I can offer is this, and it's very simple. If you vote for Labor as you always have, um, then you get a Labor government, not much else will happen in Ramsey in the electorate. Same with Liberal. If you vote for Nick, well, you're voting for some very, very unknown people or some people that have not really got far, even with the major parties in the past. And look, maybe that'll, maybe it's nice to have someone like Nick in the upper house, but we did vote him there once before he left. He went to the Senate, he left. Uh, I mean, we need someone that's gonna hang around. I've been 20 years fighting to make this place better. And look, I've achieved a fair bit. Um, but I'm doing it on my own budget. Any other small business people out there like me, <laughs> it's not a lot of money coming in. It's getting tough to survive and it shouldn't be. Um, so what I can offer is to be that little ray of hope, um, try and set a good example for future um, aspiring candidates and um, 
be there for you if you've got something wrong, there's a problem, I want you to call my office if I'm, if I'm elected. If I'm not elected, give me a call anyway, I'll, I'll damn well try my best to help you. And um, if we can all work together, um, I can get out there and say, okay, I want this roads fixed. I don't wanna be stuck in traffic at Kings Road crossing, I want that fixed. Uh, I can go to the council and say, can you pull your head in council, as you know I've done <laughs> many times, and, and we can get these shopping trolleys out of the streets and the rubbish and get the place cleaned up and looking decent. I don't see why we can't aspire to be the best state. I don't see why we can't aspire to be the best electorate. Why can't we? Um, why can't we, if the, there's poor people, come, why can't we feed them? And if people are struggling, why can't we find ways to provide cheaper, cheaper uh, power, um, cheaper food? Why do, why do our elderly, after all the work they've done, have to pay to catch a bus, for Christ's sake? You'd think some of these services will be free. Um, this is what I'm here to do. Uh, I can't change the world. Uh, I won't, I will put it this way. I'll try and change the world, but I probably can't change it all. But I'll, I'll do the very, very best I can. And I think just for once, um, I can promise you one thing. Um, when it comes to the title of honourable, I'll damn well earn it. Um, I won't just lie, I won't just call myself. I won't call myself the best candidate. I'll prove that I'm the best candidate. And if you um, doubt my history, you can Google any topic of your choice. Um, give me a call. Look at what I've done for the last few years. It, it, I hope that sincerely you can understand that I really do care. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. I've never walked away. Uh, and I've copped a, a little bit of intimidation and problems and bullying over the year myself. And I know exactly how it feels. And, and last but not least, um, when it comes to keeping the streets safe, um, we have a problem with hoon, hoons in, in the Salisbury area. We have a problem with motorbike riders. Um, and you know, the big problem is, I was a kid, uh, I loved doing a burnout. I rode motorbikes when I was a kid and I still do. Um, you know, there needs to be somewhere for them. And um, these are the sorts of things that we need to talk about as a community. You know, can we find the area? Can we find a way past the red tape? Um, the, any problems that comes up, there's no more sweeping under the rug with me. Um, I'll give it the best go I can of finding an answer. And um, I, I tend to be able to look beyond the red tape um, for answers in the world. And uh, I'll do that for you guys. If you don't vote for me, Look, really, you're not getting rid of me anyway. Um, I'm going to continue to expand my markets, continue to help educate our children. I'll set up a um, Feed the North um, this year and, and help those that are really struggling. And I'll continue to do that, whether you pay me or whether you elect me or whether you don't. Um, if I am elected, I'll be able to do a much better job so I have better resources. So thank you for enduring this massively long video. And uh, I love you all anyway, and I'll keep doing my very, very best for you. Thank you.